please help me welcome Kevin Paul. Thank you, Tim. And thank you, everybody, for having me. Thank you for coming as well. Thank you, guys, as a club. We're doing a really great job. You're you one of, if not the highest member club in the in the in the area. And you guys are doing a really great job in general. And I saw Susan getting up here, and she had the sheet of what people were doing and everything. And you guys are just doing a lot of things that a lot of clubs don't do. And the fact that you guys reached out to me months ago and said, hey, we want to do a mentoring workshop. It's definitely really a big plus, and I'm really happy to see you guys not only do really well, but make it make my job a lot easier. I'm involved in a lot more of the other clubs because maybe they need a little help. But with you guys, I'm pretty hands-off because you need my help. But do reach out if you ever need anything, okay? You guys asked me to put on a mentoring workshop, and I said, all right, sounds good. So uh, a couple things before I get going. I am the area director. Does everybody know what that means? Oh, well, okay, well, we will touch on that a little bit later, what you guys might want to do with this part of your metric. And I'm also the Vice President of Education of my home club, which is called Tech Masters. Most of us are programmers or some other IT-related thing, which is why I always do presentations with slides and technology and pretty much everything I do. And we do so much stuff technically and online, and we don't do a lot of paper pickups and stuff, so sorry you only have one hand out, but that's just the word. That's how we roll. All right, so, a mentor is someone who sees more talent and ability within you than you see in yourself and helps bring it out of you. Bob Proctor is a famous public speaker. You always want to start off a meeting or, or any kind of a presentation with some sort of inspirational quote. Get everybody engaged. Instead of just get going and start showing them bulleted slides. I was a little pro tip there. So why do <coughs> have a mentoring program in the first place? I think it's really important to discuss the why why things are important, instead of just going in and giving in the nitty gritty details. You want to make sure that people are actually engaged and understand why it's important to do things. So why have a mentoring program? Mentored members are more likely to remain active and there would be less turnover. Does anybody know why, uh, well, I'm not sure if you even know this, but in general I've noticed over the years that the most likely people to quit the Toastmasters clubs are the newest members. Does anybody know why that might be? Well, in our club, it's for two reasons. One, it could be their job, you know, how busy it might get. But the other thing is, if you're not sure what you're doing, you're not receiving the help you need. Exactly. They are not <coughs> engaged, and they're not productive right away. They don't see the value when they first join. And in their first few meetings that they come, they're not quite seeing the value. And people aren't engaging in that. If you have an adequate mentoring program, they will get that engagement and they will start seeing the value and start realizing that value much more quickly. Mentoring develops more leaders for the club. It's great to have active members and everything, but you want to have people that will lead. In fact, one of the people join Toastmasters for a number of reasons. There are plenty of people that join because English is their second language. There are a lot of people who are very poor communicators. Maybe they have a lot of nervousness when they get up in front of even small crowds or groups of coworkers. So they join Toastmasters to get over those things. And there are people who want to be public speakers or just be better at giving, getting up and giving presentations, things like that. But leadership is actually, in general, the number one reason why people would join Toastmasters, even if you're not thinking about it like that. Why do you want to be a better communicator? Why do you want to be a better speaker? Because you'd like to progress in your career because you'd like to have some sort of leadership role, right? When all is said and done, what is the tagline of Toastmasters? Does anybody know? Where leaders are made. Everybody thinks that it's about communication, but really that's a stepping stone to better leadership. <coughs> when you have better leaders in your club, you're going to have a better club experience and people are going to get more out of it. Mentoring develops the mentor's leadership skills. The individual person who's doing the mentoring will grow as a result of it. They're not just giving out, they're actually thinking, what should I say? How would I do that? And any time a mentee asks a question, they may not know that answer. So they're going to have to go figure it out themselves as well. So they will grow as well. How do I serve as a mentor? Communicate regularly. For example, I personally like to reach out to anybody that I'm mentoring before every meeting and after every meeting in the first few months that they're there, <clears throat> make sure that I'm available to them to answer any questions that they have, 
And after a meeting, I'll say, hey, you're, you did a great job for Mary. Good word. We were able to fit that in, that sort of thing. And maybe give them some gentle tips for improving in the future. Establish communication expectations. How will you go about communicating with them? Will you talk to them after the meeting? Will you send them an email afterward? But you as the mentor should really be listening to what they want. If they would rather you speak in person or if they maybe they don't respond to emails very well and some people seem to not, then talk to them in person so that you can figure out or, or whatever it is that helps them actually respond. Understand the members' goals and provide opportunities to grow. What are their goals? So like I said, some people have English as a second language. Some people are trying to become a leader in their workplace. Some people are trying to be better communicators in their personal life. Try to find out what their goals are. And guess what? Goals change over time. What if you were a really nervous speaker when you first joined, and a few months later, you're actually pretty calm and pleasant in front of the crowd? What are your new goals? Regularly provide encouragement, guidance, and of course, gently of course, areas for improvement. You definitely want to let them know, hey, I saw you give your icebreaker, and you are really good at projecting your voice, or you look really confident up there, you really own the stage. But maybe you have a few areas to improve upon, maybe you have a few too many odds and odds, that sort of thing. And like I said, oh, be a role model and an example to follow. If you're their mentor and you're kind of being lackadaisical about your roles in the club, you're kind of setting a bad example. So be a stronger Toastmaster. How do we actually start a mentoring program? Write something down, anything, right now. Do you guys have any kind of formal mentoring program? Yep. Great, you're halfway there. As soon as you get something, then you have some kind of standing on which to grow. You can say, what's working, what's not working? And you can improve it year over year. But the fact that you have anything is really, really important. If someone is watching this presentation later, if you don't have a, a formal mentoring program, get something, anything. Listen to a few tips that we talked about today on the handout that you got. Put something down, even if it's just a little bit. Put it somewhere where others can see and reference it. You guys have, as your as a corporate club, you have a SharePoint or something like that, right? So you, I imagine that any of your mentoring documents are there. Great, awesome. Put it somewhere where everybody can see it and reference it in case, you know, students get hit by a bus and all of a sudden you don't have that because it's locked away in your closet or something. As long as other people can reference it, they can pick up and roll with your mentoring program. Each club may be different. Maybe your club does, isn't a corporate club and you don't have a fancy schmancy SharePoint <coughs> site to put it in. Whatever it is, we use Google Docs in my club because everybody can use Google Docs. The Vice President of Education should assign a mentor to each new member upon joining. Except in our club, it's membership and mentoring that does it. Sure. Well, that's the general rule, but each club is different. You can't do it your own way. You should assign a mentor to each season member that wants one. Do you have mentoring for people who have been in Toastmasters for a while? Currently, we are mentoring. We made a decision as an officers club because we have so many new members. We don't have enough mentors. Mm -hmm. So we decided we'd mentor people through the first five projects, you know, and, and the different projects in the, the evaluation. Mm -hmm. Toastmaster General evaluated the evaluators and the other evaluation options and table topics. You know, and so once we've mentored people through there, they've done them all, you know, through project five, then we open the mentors up. Should you do more new members, yeah. or if that person wants to, then they can start being a mentor too. Good. I always, I always go back to job shooting my mentor when I started, so if I ever have a question about Project 9 or something like that, I'll go and ask We do informal after that. We Great. Informally amongst each other. But yeah, that's one thing that gets overlooked in a lot of clubs. You may have grown a lot. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're a really good Toastmaster, you know. But you know what? Yeah, Sue may be some rock star that has won a bunch of contest and all this and that, but you know, nobody's perfect, everybody can improve. So we should always have somebody who keeps us in check, make sure that we're meeting our goals, things like that. Assign a mentor to each season member that want one, and the member mentor should meet and decide on goals. And again, those those goals will change over time. If you've been in Toastmasters for five years, maybe your goals are dramatically different from what they were on day one, right? Mentoring lasts for at least the first three projects. Luckily you guys go for five. I would suggest maybe close to a year, and as the year progresses, maybe you are getting a little more advanced tips, and maybe you're meeting less frequently, maybe giving them, well, you did a great job on time, or maybe you could skip that after a few months, right? The mentee should evaluate your, the mentor for Project 9 in the Competent Leader Manual. 
I'm sure you all know what that is. And the, the project that is actually a pretty tough one to finish, so you should be getting credit for what you're, what you're doing. Not only you're actually growing as the leader, but you are getting credit for yourself and for the club. So, great. You have all these ideas, you told us all these things about what we're supposed to do, but how do we do it? Luckily, Toastmasters have you, have you covered. I find it very interesting that a lot of people in a lot of clubs really don't seem to know that there's best practices for pretty much everything in Toastmasters that is readily available for you on the district website or the, or the Toastmasters International website. Check them out regularly. If you have a question about Toastmasters, go look for it. You might be able to find it. There might be an entire program or worksheets or this handout. I didn't make that handout. That was made by the district and has been passed out. If you went to officer training, you probably already seen that handout. For example, the Mentor Interest Survey. Everybody familiar with this? If you are not, you should be. The Mentor Interest Survey will ask uh, new members or anybody, really. You should be giving this out probably once a year. It will ask you, yes, I would like to mentor a new member. I would like to mentor a more experienced member. I am a new member that would like to have a mentor. I am a more experienced member that would like to mentor. So now you, as the Vice President of Education or membership in you guys' case, will go over this and figure out who should I mentor who. <coughs> it, it gives you a good groundwork for getting started on who should be mentoring who. The mentor assignment notice here, after you've figured that out, say, hey, you're going to assign this, you're going to mentor this person. And the mentee assignment, hey, you got yourself a mentor. Here they are, and here's the contact information. Pretty cool, right? You got yourself your first steps of actually getting going with that communication. And after that, guess what? When you're done mentoring, look, you get a, a mentor certificate. Holy cow, that is awesome. And if you're really, 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 really in full of pomp and circumstance, you might get yourself a mentor pin. Wow, wasn't that awesome? I totally want that, right? <laughs> Alright, so after you've assigned mentor or mentee relationship, what do you do? We have a first meeting. What you should do is you should explain, as the mentor, you should explain the parts of the meeting. For example, the business, the business portion of the meeting, however long that goes. Some clubs do it for 30 seconds, some clubs do it for 10 minutes. Table topics, because we're talking about the different kinds of speaking, impromptu versus prepared, evaluations, that sort of thing. Go over the different areas of the meeting. Answer any questions that the mentee has. Orient the new member to the club customs. Each club is different. Some clubs have special awards. Some people do things a little bit differently from other clubs. There's a club in, in Woodbury that is meets at a church, and they, do, they have like a, a little invocation involving a prayer or something like that. Each club is different. So let people know. In my club, we have technical awards. So if you explain something technical that could be relatable to a non-technical person, because that's a lot of what we do in our day-to-day -day jobs, then you can get an award for that. That sort of thing. Help the mentee become comfortable and a part of the club. We talked about retention. Retention is a really often overlooked part of Toastmasters and membership in general. You, if you can get people to feel that they're a part of the club a lot more quickly, then they're going to be much more likely to stay as a member. Sometimes people can feel like when they're just joining that there's a clique of people who've been in the club a long time and they're not being involved. This will help them get accustomed to the club. Explain the sign-up procedure. In your club, I imagine there's probably a SharePoint document where you sign up, I'm going to do this role. Sound about right? And in my club, we have a Google Doc spreadsheet. And as the Vice President of Education, I set the meeting roles in advance for a couple of months. But you are everybody has access to it and they can all change like I'm not available that week or I'd, I'd like to give a speech so I can get caught up with my copy or that kind of thing. Ask the Vice President of Education to schedule the mentee's icebreaker ASAP. In my club when we first started, well, in general, technical people are maybe, maybe we have a few more issues to work on in general than non-IT people. And one of the big things is we get a lot of cold feet and we're a little more nervous than the average person. And when the first few years, what we were doing is we were having people give their icebreaker speech after a couple of months. And we don't have two meetings per month. We meet every week. So you're going eight, ten meetings before you finally give your icebreaker speech. And one of the biggest ways of getting people involved and feeling part of the club is to get them to give their icebreaker speech. Toastmasters recommends within two meetings after they join, they're to give their icebreaker speech. 
encourage the mentee to ask questions. If they're not coming up with questions, say, hey, you know, it's really important that I find out what it is that you're trying to get out of this. And go ahead. Ask away. What I would like to do now is to go through a little demo here of a first meeting. And Tim is going to help me with role playing. So Tim is going to be the part of the mentee, and I'm going to be the mentor. Hey, Tim, how's it going? Hey, nice to meet you, Vince. Glad to see you again. I'm glad you joined the club. I, 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 I like your enthusiasm, and I hope you're going to be a good addition to the club. I'd like to go over a few things in our club. For example, the meeting is broken down into a lot of different things. Each part of the meeting is meant to help you grow in a different way, communication, leadership, that sort of thing. In our club, Tech Masters, we have a, a formal business meeting. We follow Robert's Rules of Order, although it's a little more relaxed. One of our members likes to call it Bob's Rules of Order. And we go over different, in, different business. We discuss things that we're going to do. For example, we're going to be doing our speech contest in a few weeks. We're going to be doing, we're actually having a, an evaluation extravaganza is what we're calling it. We're having Keith Hardy, that's a big name, you guys should know that guy, who's going to be our guest speaker, and he's going to talk all about evaluation. He's from an evaluation specialty club. And so we bring up important things. We like to give presentations at tech conferences. So we'll say, hey, there's a tech conference coming up. Anybody want to give a submit a talk? That kind of thing. Then we move on to the regular meeting, and we, we discuss different things. We're trying to improve our communication leadership in a whole bunch of different ways. The table topics portion is impromptu speaking. Some people will ask you a goofy question like, you know, hey, uh, Chad over here just got turned into a zombie, and he's about to come over and eat me. What do we do? Then you have to think on your feet for the next one to two minutes. How many times do, does that happen during the meeting? Is that all throughout the meeting at random? Or? Oh, no. Well, there's actually a segmented portion of the meeting, maybe 10-ish minutes, and the table topics moderator will ask a handful of people, usually people that don't have the largest roles, like the people who have prepared speeches or the Toastmaster who's running the show, okay. and we'll ask them random questions to get you kind of thinking on your feet. That's really good for things like interviews or just maybe questions that pop up in a demo, maybe that you have to do at work, things like sense. that. Yeah. Then we have prepared speeches, which is stuff we, in our new member packet, we gave you the icebreaker speech. I read about that, yeah. Yep. And in, eventually you'll be getting a, a, an entire manual full of beginner speeches that will help you take you through the first basic kinds of speaking, like organization and gestures, how you say things, that sort of thing. And then we have probably the most important part of the meeting, which is evaluations. It's great to practice every different part of speaking, but we want to know how we did. And getting that immediate feedback is probably the most valuable portion of the meeting. And, well, there's a lot of different things. In my club, in our club, what we do is we have various different awards. A lot of clubs have, like, a Best Speaker Award or a Best Evaluator Award. Okay. And some clubs have a Best Table Topics Response Award as well. In our club, since we have a lot of technical talks, we like to give an award for the person who gives the best non-technical explanation of a technical thing so that non-technical people can understand them. Sure. And let's see what else. We have a document on Google Docs. We actually have an, an, an entire Google account and all this different, you know, we're, we're, pretty, we're pretty hooked up, you know, Twitter account, all that, Facebook and everything. And we have a, on our Google Docs account, we actually have a spreadsheet which explains the roles for each of the meeting. And as the Vice President of Education, I have everything laid out for a couple of months, but if you can't make a meeting or if you'd rather have a different role, maybe you're not comfortable with a particular role right yet, then you can change that and I'll give you access to that so you can do that. And the last thing I want to talk about is the icebreaker speech. You Again, we have the, the icebreaker speech printed out for you right here on this piece of paper here, and it has the evaluation of what exactly it is that you're looking to do. But it's basically just about you. So you're kind of the world's preeminent authority on yourself, so it's usually the easiest one to give. And how long does it take to complete the program? Is there an end to it? Toastmasters in general? or Yes, yeah, Toastmasters. Well, th there really is no goal, or no end goal, because what your current goals are may change over time. Whatever your current goals are, if you just want to be better at communicating with people, once you reach that, hopefully you'll have new goals, because as you get further into the program, you're going to find new ways that you'd like to improve. And you can continue working with me or any of the other people in the club to accomplish those goals. Well, what if I'm really scared at uh, or somebody that I could practice with? Uh, don't sure. feel comfortable about peace speaking. To <laughs> okay. Well, first off, there's plenty of opportunities to speak 
in the meeting, whether it's as a table topics answerer or anything like that, but you can always talk to me. You can practice in front of a mirror. Hopefully there's a friend or a loved one who will put up with you kind of hemming on your way through some things. Okay. But yeah, I've definitely done that before where I was going to give a presentation or a speech to a greater part, a greater group or something like maybe some kind of mentoring workshop. And I've actually talked to myself in the car oh, just to kind of figure out yeah. how will I go about relaying that particular point. And what does the sentence sound like? That's a good point. Well, I'm sold. I'm in. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Vince. I look forward to meeting with you next meeting. See you Tuesday morning at 7.45 at Recruiting Enterprise in Bloomington. Thanks for taking the time. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. Let's all give a hand to Tim. <laughs> so that's kind of how that would go. Then, after around a month or so, maybe in a club that meets twice a month, maybe wait two months, something like that. You make the you, you have a second meeting, and in that second meeting, whether it's a phone call or you meet a person before or after the meeting, or when you're a corporate club, you can meet over lunch, whatever it is. Have another meeting, and in that, what you want to do is talk to them about their progress and things like that, and make them aware of the resources. I've already talked about Toastmasters on the national website, and the district has a website. There's tons of resources, and they're getting more and more electronically oriented and IT friendly so that you can find more and more things online. In fact, they recently put all of the competent communicator speeches online. So you probably looked for those before, or why it might be a little difficult to find them. Now it's not difficult anymore. They say, hey, here they are. Because sometimes, for example, you sign up, you're supposed to give a, an icebreaker speech within two weeks, and you don't get your manual in two weeks. So it's kind of unfortunate. Anyway, so make them aware of the resources, not only in Toastmasters in the district, but your own club. Let them know about your SharePoint site. I have a question for you. Sure. So, you know, you with us, because we're always doing stuff right away, I would wait a month. I would go over a lot of what you're talking about there in the beginning to explain to people exactly what to expect mm -hmm. going forward. In yep. fact, I, for some of the new members that are considering joining, I usually try to explain a lot of that beforehand so they know right. what they're getting into. Yep. These are essentially baselines. Yeah. If you go above and beyond what's being suggested here, you're doing a great job. Uh, you know, we should just wrap this up. You guys are fine. Let's go. <laughs> So if you go and be out above and beyond this, again, these are baselines, these are bare minimums, so this is going to be a successful mentoring program. If you do anything more than this, or do anything better than this, or faster than this, great. It's just going to be that much more effective. Explain the roles of club officers and information that they can provide. What does the vice president of education do? What does the president do? What does the treasury do? Sergeant at arms, things like that. Not only will they know who to go to when they have questions about various parts of the Toastmasters <coughs> Club. But then when you're looking for new officers, which you should be doing every year, trying to inject new blood into the club leadership, you'll they'll have a, a, an idea of what to expect. Explain the education program, for example, the communication track and the leadership track. Does everybody understand what happens after you finish your communication, your competent communicator, your competent leader? Kind of sort of, right? Yeah. Well, hopefully you'll understand uh, do, can anybody tell me the different levels of the communication track? Are you talking about the CC? Huh? Are you talking about the CC? Yeah, well, yes, after the competent communicator. Can anybody other than Susan Nelson tell me what comes after that? Yes. Um, advanced communicator silver, advanced communicator bronze, advanced communicator gold, and then this thing that goes Bronze, silver, and gold. Oh, yes. bronze, silver. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yep. And then how about the leadership track? Somebody not named Sue. <laughs> is it the same way I heard it once? Is it bronze, silver, and gold? Yeah. The, it, is, uh, it is bronze and silver. There's no gold. And then once you've completed your advanced leader silver and your advanced communicator gold, what do you have after that? The same as chosen. The same as chosen. That's right. And it, what I found is that the competent leader is essentially doing what you're supposed to do in the club. You're going through your roles, evaluator, timer, grammarian, that sort of thing. And then you do a couple more things where you're establishing yourself within the club, like running a contest or something like that, mentoring somebody. Then advanced, community, advanced leader bronze seems to be a leader within the club, helping the club, you know, being uh, on the leadership committee, the club executive committee, doing something like a high performance leadership, or actually, it's uh, advanced leader, so, uh, doing the club success plan, 
and moments of truth, that sort of thing. And for an advanced leader silver, you are a leader above the club club level, like being an area director or being a club coach, helping build a new club. So it's, these different levels make a lot of sense. Provide feedback to the mentee about their roles and their speeches. By then, they should have given their icebreaker speech, obviously. You can give them some more one-on-one -on -one feedback about that. Hey, I noticed that you have good command of the room, you have good vocal volume, variety, that sort of thing, but you haven't hot too much, you maybe you rock or you, you twist on one foot or something like that. A lot of people have a lot of weird quirks and tics when they're speaking. And say, hey, you know, you did a great job at premiering, but maybe I as well, yoga wasn't the best word of the day. Probably think of a word that maybe you can use a little more. That kind of thing. Help with speeches and other assignments. Tell them about the next few speeches. Now we're going to organize your speech, and then we're going to talk about vocal writing, and we're going to talk about gestures, and making sure that your gestures are actually adding to what you're saying, as opposed to just making gestures, right? So you're talking about all the individual topics. Explain the responsibilities as a member. This one kind of gets overlooked and does tend to explain people's lack of involvement or why maybe retention is a bit of an issue. Membership means commitment to helping the club and the members be successful. It isn't just you come to a mentoring workshop and then I give and you all take, right? Your typical Toastmasters meeting is everyone pitches in. The way I like to put it is everybody puts in a nickel and everyone gives out a dollar from everybody else. Does everybody know what the Toastmasters promise is? Anybody? What I like to do when somebody joins our club is, is as we, we actually escort them out of the room, we have a formal ceremony where we vote them in and everything. And when they've been escorted out of the room, I give them the Toastmasters promise card, which looks like this. A little tiny thing, I don't remember the whole thing, but the whole point of this is you're basically telling everybody you're making a commitment. You're trying to help the club, you're trying to help the members. Please try to show up on time and fulfill your roles. It's obviously a nonprofit volunteer organization. So you, if you were to skip a meeting or to skip out on a role, there is no direct problem with that. If you don't show up to a meeting at work, maybe you get in trouble. If you don't do your job at work, maybe you get in trouble. But if you don't go to a Toastmasters club, no one cares, right? But you're hurting everybody at the same time. You have a speech and you're like, ah, I just didn't have time to do it. I'll just not show up. That really puts everybody else in a bind. At the very least, a couple days in the event, say, you know what, I don't think I'm going to be ready. Let's push it off another meeting or two. To give people some time to do an impromptu speech or maybe pull up one of the prepared speeches like the mentoring module so that they can go ahead and practice it and fill in for them. Tip for mentors. Be available. That's kind of the number one thing. Be available. Say, hey, if you have any questions, if you have any concerns at any point in time, let me know. Be patient. Again, a lot of people are operating at different times. Maybe you're a rock star Toastmaster. Maybe you're a rock star leader. Maybe the other person has a lot more, a lot more room to grow. Just let them work on their own time and be available for them. Be sensitive. People are different. Maybe they care about different things. and You're going to worry more about what they want out of things, right? Be respectful. Again, don't tell them, why didn't you make that meeting? Why didn't you do this particular role? Understand, listen to them, find out what issues might be. Be flexible. Again, we're trying to make yourself available as much as possible. Don't say, I'm only going to talk to you at noon on Friday, right? That's it, and then from then on, I'm done. No, make yourself available. Be supportive of the club. You're trying to improve the club. Be knowledgeable. And if you're not knowledgeable, that's okay, but become knowledgeable. You want to be able to answer their questions, right? So maybe figure out the things that I've asked you that maybe you don't know too much about. Maybe figure those things out. Be confident. That's actually really important when you're working with someone and they're looking to you as a leader. Be confident. Yes, totally know all about that. I'm a little busy. I'll get back to you in a couple of months. And then you go figure it out and find it. Because when you project confidence, then it's, people are going to feed off of that. Be a very good listener. That's actually, like I'm saying, it's the most important part. Find out what their goals are and find out how, what, how they want to improve and how you can help them. Be concerned about them. What is it that they want to achieve out of Toastmasters? What are their current goals? And how can you, how can you help them achieve them? More tips, be positive. You don't want to be too harsh. You're not, you're not an NFL coach getting on. You're not Bill Belichick getting on. Jamie Collins is about how you missed the tackle. Now we're going to cut you and send you out to the Browns or whatever it is. You're going to be positive and say, 
Well, it's okay that you flubbed up your icebreaker speech. It was really interesting that you talked about this or that or the other thing. You, you had a really good command in your voice until you broke down crying around. You, you did a good job until then. Avoid over-mentoring. You're not managing them. You're not in a position of authority over them in any way, shape, or form whatsoever. You're there to help. That's it. You're not managing them. You're not coddling them either. You don't want to do stuff for them. If they say, I'm not sure what to do for a grammarian, don't come up with a word of the day for them and hand it to them. If they, you know, if they don't know what to do for table topics, don't give them the topics. Nothing like that. Don't help write their speech or anything like that whatsoever. Don't do anything for them. You try to help them improve. You have to get them to think for themselves, and you want them to be able to stand on their own two feet. Again, don't do stuff for them. Help guide them so that they can achieve it on their own. Share your experience to relate to the mentee. You have personal experiences, and you have personal goals. Maybe you're not as unique as you think, and you can actually relate to them if you share those things with them. Tip for mentees, because sometimes they're not the biggest, most responsible partners in that relationship, right? If you are here and you're looking to get a mentor, be eager to learn. Don't just sit back, be eager to learn. Be receptive if somebody is experienced and they've given you a bunch of advice about things that they've gone through, uh, pertaining to the exact same things you're asking about, be receptive and be open to new ideas. A new way of thinking, a new way of doing something. Be loyal and grateful. This is a nonprofit organization. We're all here to help each other. They're taking time out of their day to help you. Be respectful and be grateful of that. Advanced mentoring program ideas we've talked about, you know, these are kind of baselines and this is going to get you halfway there and you're really going to help your club if you establish something. But a handful of things I've come up with and that I found that work in other clubs, have a VP of mentor. If you have a large enough club like you guys do, maybe break up the Vice President of Education or the Vice President of Membership's job into a, a, a very important portion of what that is, which is mentoring. I know of a club that has a Vice President of Mentoring. You, can, you don't have to adhere to the Toastmasters program 100%, especially if you're going to augment the program. So think about having something like a VP of Mentoring. Then you're offshoring a big piece of work to somebody who will only focus on that and will hopefully build your mentoring program to something really special. Have a new member packet. You probably have a guest packet, am I wrong? Do you think about a guest I'm wrong? Or? Handouts, anyway. Okay. So you have some kind of a new member packet or a new guest packet, right? A lot of clubs have get a lot of clubs have guest packets, but as far as I know, not very many have new member packets. A new member packet would be things like the Toastmasters Promise, and maybe a printout of the icebreaker speech, that kind of thing, and go over any kind of mentoring documents that you might want to give them. Things like what to expect, or what to what is expected of you as a mentee. Yep. Yeah. So for us, because we're trying to be free, we don't mm -hmm. send out lots of paper to everybody. Yep. We email the person when we first start. We let them know who their mentor is and what their mentor is going to be doing with them to help them through so that we send the links to the SharePoint so they know where to go to find their information. But our mentors, we like them to go through those first couple of um, roles that people are having with them so that they're understanding what they need to do when they sign up for a role and help them sign up for roles. So we don't do a lot of the paper stuff that maybe a lot of the other clubs do. It's just trying to reduce paper. Yeah, definitely an advantage of, of a corporate club. Everyone's going to be on the same system, right? But yeah, uh, it, so we have an electronic new member packet. That's phenomenal. Great. And again, help for the icebreaker speech, because that's something that's supposed to be given within the first couple of meetings. Have a mentor for training program. Street, so basically you're going to have maybe the VP of mentoring, and this is something you might want to layer in over time. These aren't things you just do right now today, you're going to do all these different things. But have a mentoring training program of some kind. The VP of mentoring, if you happen to have one, will help curate and design the program over time to streamline the mentoring so that everyone's kind of operating on the same level and maybe they're communicating with each of the mentors to make sure that they're doing the same kinds of things. Help all the mentors and the potential members become better mentors and maybe give the mentoring presentation that we got over here. No, no uh, is it that guy? No, well, So, everybody familiar with this mentoring module here? From the Successful Club series? That will help give you credit for advanced 
liter bronze or advanced communicated with silver? Well, most of us are not at that level yet, or we're working on those, so they're probably not familiar with it. Another thing to think about is, let's say you're in the middle of your competent communicator, and you think that getting the mentoring module would be really helpful and beneficial to your club, go have at it. You don't have to wait till you're in the middle of your advanced communicator silver to give one of those presentations. It can be sitting there waiting for you. For advanced communicator gold, you have to give a workshop of some kind, for example, speechcraft. So a couple of years ago, I gave a speechcraft workshop at my club. So I had credit sitting there from a couple of years ago when I finished my advanced communicator gold later this year. So you don't have to do it quite exactly in order. So I would suggest getting this either yearly or every other year. Maybe if you, I don't know about having, if you have a, a meeting every, every, you know, just twice a month that you want to necessarily take a whole meeting for mentoring, but in a club that meets weekly, I definitely would suggest having a mentoring-oriented meeting every year. Give recognition during club meetings. Pins if you want to get too silly and certificates and stuff, whenever people are completing their mentorship. It can be really formal about it, you know, you could have, you have a ceremony and all this and that, and have people clapping and cheering and you're posting it on social media and stuff like that, or you can be over the top and silly with it. Either way, if you recognize people who are doing mentoring, you'll hopefully get a little bit more buy-in. Right. Review your mentoring program yearly. Review it at club executive committee meeting of some kind. Do you have a regular club executive committee meeting? We meet regularly. We okay, meet regularly. At least once a month, if not more. All right, great. So, Consider at some point, whether it's once a year, or once every few months, or whatever it is, if you have a VP of mem mem uh, mentoring role, maybe that could be there, that kind of thing. So review it at the club executive committee meeting, what's been working, what's, what hasn't been working, what kind of new wrinkles you want to throw in, what kind of suggestions people have, that sort of thing. Send out mentor interest surveys yearly. I would suggest probably at the beginning of a new administration in July, give those new member, in in the mentor interest survey to find out who wants to have a mentor, who would like to be a mentor, maybe some new people are ready to step up, maybe a person who had a mentor and stopped having a mentor says, you know what, I have new goals that are a little outlandish and I'd like to have a mentor help me achieve those goals. Give mentoring module from Toastmasters, like I mentioned before, take up the whole meeting if you have to. Not only give the mentoring module, but have additional speeches about it. Have <coughs> different kinds of valuations of the mentoring program, that sort of thing. Keep it going and encourage commitment to the program. Don't let it slip. A lot of times, you know, you start a, meet, a mentoring program and it takes off right away and then it kind of slips over time. A lot of the newer people or the, the older members have said, eh, I've already completed Project 9, I don't really care about that anymore. And they themselves don't feel the value as much either, so maybe they start to let it slip. Encourage the seasoned members to accept a mentor as well. As I said, maybe you know, you're the best Toastmaster in your club, but everybody can teach everybody else something. <clears throat> Somebody could catch a new wrinkle that you can improve upon. So again, I encourage, strongly encourage, seasoned men members to have a mentor as well. I mean, there was somebody when I was giving officer training who has been in Toastmasters for like 25 years and was past district director and she couldn't find any, a member, a mentor in her club that could teach her anything. So she went outside the club and found somebody who was experiencing another club. So they could be mentor. It's a good, good way to continue growing. All right, resources. That's pretty much all the content I have today. This slide deck, uh, they, all the bit.ly links are case sensitive, so you know, take care of uh, TM mentoring presentation, my club's mentoring folder, all the documents that we have, Tech Master <laughs> Mentoring, the PDF of the handout that you all got is there. I didn't, I didn't make a bit of link, sorry. You can also find it on the Distances Officer Training page as well. I yes? did update the presentation from today and the PDF handout is on our mentoring support section cool. of our members. Like Already included it. Phenomenal. It's already on there. I'll and the meeting wrap up. What happened? Oh, I was going to say, I'll, when I send out the meeting wrap up, I'll put that on there. Great. And the mentoring kit which I would suggest for not only kicking off the mentoring program, but trying to see if maybe yours is up to snuff, is located there. You can, you can download all the materials so you don't have to necessarily pay any money for it, and you can print those out. We have them. a lot of those materials already on the yep. mentoring support thing. Great. So it's already Perfect. uploaded. Yep, again, that's kind of more baseline stuff, and then 
anything you can augment to that and add to that, it's great. All right, do we have any questions or anything? Sure. Is there like a checklist? That's what I was, you know. Do you have a checklist on that? There's a checklist out there. That's one of the resources. I believe on the uh, on here there's a checklist of some kind. Uh, let's see. On the back, there's a checklist here on your handout. And in some of the documents that my club has in our mentoring program, or our mentoring folder, there are uh, you know various different tips and checklists about how to start a program. We have, uh, there's a, an article in the Toastmasters magazine about mentoring that has a whole bunch of different tips and stuff like that that we have saved in our mentoring folder. And there are a few, there are a few resources about kind of augmenting and maybe I kind of borrowed a little from some of the things on the Toastmasters website. Any other questions? Did I do something? I have a couple things sure. to go over then as well. Thank you. Thank you.